back to Skippers today. We are doing four must draft pitches for your fantasy baseball team. Join our Discord. Check out our rankings. Please subscribe. Help us. We'd help. appreciate that. Jeremy Roach, your first must draft pitcher. I'm excited to talk about this guy, Lucas Giolito. Fourth round pick this year. Way different than last year. I remember we both had him inside our top 10. Um, I had him as ranked as seventh before last season. He disappointed a lot of fantasy managers last year. Um, not the best year compared to what he was before. His strikeout percentage was over 30 the previous two seasons. Last year, he was like mid-20s. Um, I'm hoping that strikeout percentage gets back to what he's used to. Um, big fastball changeup guy, uh, lethal combo. He actually had his lowest ground ball percentage of his career last year. And I think it's and also that changeup, he was missing too high. Most bombs against that changeup nine of his career as well um, so I think he'll figure out things he started to throw that slider more and it was working mixing it in um, so that three pitch arsenal I think he's going to use to start off this season this is also a guy who's going to give you plenty of opportunities for when he went like 11 and 9 last year that's 19 opportunities um, to get a victory uh, White Sox are a really good team in a decently weak division uh, Lucas Giolito, I think, in the fourth round is a very good second pitcher to your fantasy baseball team. Don't hate that at all. I don't think he took the step that people wanted, but mm -hmm. hey, if you take the chance on him now and this year's the step up, then we're laughing here. Yeah. All right, my guy, Max Freed, ADP of 67, last season 14 and 7, 304 ERA, 109 whip. 158 strikeouts and only 165 and two thirds innings pitched. He broke out in 2020, continued on with a great 2021, thanks to a huge change in pitch mm -hmm. usage. He had a 53.1% fastball usage in 2019, changed that all up to 39.1% in 2021. His curveball was his best pitch last season, which he throws 26% of the time. He carries a 33.6 called strike and whiff rate and only has a 164 average against. That's a great pitch. So, a site that we look at for this is pitcher list. Nick mm -hmm. Pollock, former guest, awesome site to look at. So his write-up on Freed, Nick Pollock, he said he thinks he could improve on his subpar strikeout rate with increased usage of his slider, which could push his strikeout rate up to 30% instead of mid-20s. And Max Freed, that's really the only hit on him, I think, is he just doesn't strike out enough people. Yeah. So that's why you push him into an ADP of 67 here. He had the sixth most wins in baseball last year. His ERA was 22nd in the league for starters, and WHIP was 30th in the league top 10% of the league in average exit velocity against, and a career 54% ground ball rate. Really good stats for everything for Max Freed. I feel like he's a guy who kind of gets lost for absolutely no reason at all. You also see these stats, the ERA being really good and the whip being really good. Mm -hmm. But his first 11 innings pitch, he allowed 14 earned runs. Then he went on the IL with a hamstring injury. Then he comes back May 5th. And after that, 43 earned runs in 165 innings pitch. That's a 234 ERA and an 092 whip. That's more the majority of a season than the shitty 11 innings he had at the start of the year. So you take that out. Max Freed, really good season. Obviously good in the playoffs as well. Yep. I don't know why he's kind of being overlooked. He's a wins machine. 17 in 2019. Seven wins and 11 starts in 2020. And 14 in 2021. I expect that that trend to continue, obviously, with a really good Braves team. You pencil him in for like 15 to 17 wins. He's a top 40 overall rank, most likely, at the end of the season. One strike up per inning. Good whip, good ERA, maybe even some Cy Young votes this season for Max Freed. Wow. That is a is that a hot take coming from you? I don't think it's I'm bought in on this whole you go hitters early. So that's why these two pitchers that I'm gonna mm -hmm. pick are I think guys that can anchor your rotation. Yeah. I think that Freed the uh, I think he's very valuable in Roto, obviously compared to points with, like you said, the strikeout yeah. um, upside isn't really there. So that ADP could like, it's crazy because you think about it, like his ADP should probably be lower in Roto, but but because it balances between points and Roto, yeah. that's where you could get value. And I think that it, it's a good pick. So I went for one guy who didn't have strikeout upside to a guy that has strikeout upside. And I'll get to that after. So okay. kind of balance Agreed. each other out. Um, talking about pitch arsenal, Logan Webb. I've been drafting him in pretty much all our mocks. I love his value in the eighth round. Uh, we all saw what he did in playoffs. I mean, his stuff is, is filthy. Uh, he's only 25 years old. He had a 3.03 ERA. Um, he had 11 wins last year. The Giants are obviously not as good as last year. They lost some key pieces. They had added Chris Bryan at the deadline. Um, and then Kevin Gosman is gone. But this Giants team is obviously still a very good team, veteran team. Uh, they pretty much committed to Logan Webb sort of being the ace in that rotation. They signed Rodon, but uh, I think that Logan Webb is their guy. Their future. I looked at 
what I wanted to see was, did he make a big change from 2020 to 2021? Because those two years were completely different um, in the success. And he did. He started to throw his sinker, became his fastball. He threw sinker 40% last season. He threw it 15% in 2020. Um, and his slider, obviously one of the nastiest sliders in the MLB. Um, he threw that 28% in 2021, and that was 15% in 2020. Hitters hit 156 against that pitch with a 47% whiff rate. I mean, those numbers are – that just shows me that Logan Webb was completely changed what he throws – and it turns out his numbers were just really good last year. So I don't really see anything like, is he going to have, is he going to go back to what he used to be? Well, I don't believe that because he completely changed everything last year and it worked for him. So what's going to change this year? You have to hope mm-hmm. he keeps the same stuff. Like all the numbers look good. So you stick with that arsenal. You should be in for another good season. Yeah. Eighth round pick too. Like I've been, obviously I'm a pitcher's early type guy, but him, I've been getting him as my SP4, which I think is wild. Not bad. Mm-hmm. All right, my second guy, Joe Musgrove, San Diego mm-hmm. Padres, ADP of 77 last season, 11 and 9, 318 ERA, 108 whip, 203 strikeouts in 181 in a third innings pitch. Also, no hitter, second start of the season. That's he big. spent 2021 snapping off every off speed pitch known to man at an insane rate. This, like, his good mentality of off speed pitches first, his curveball is an 88th percentile spin rate, his slider. And his curveball both returned batting averages against under 160 last year, and they combined for over 50% usage. Why would you change from that? It just mm-hmm. makes no sense. He's going to go back to it this season, and they are wildly successful. If he moves away from throwing a re- kind of shitty cutter to throwing more forcing fastballs, which has the second highest spin rate in all of baseball, but he only throws it 18% of the time and is the 13th best call strike and whiff rate. I think he takes a huge step forward this season. I don't know how like the pitching coach kind of doesn't see mm-hmm. that. Some of these metrics like, hey, Joe, this cutter really isn't working that well. So let's just throw some heaters at yeah. him. Um, he threw the 13th most innings in baseball last year, while the ninth best called strike and whiff rate combined. 80th percentile chase rate. Flew under the radar as someone who was just really consistent for your leagues. He's going to give you 25 to 30 starts if he's healthy. He's in San Diego. Petco's a decently good pitcher's park, I'd say. Okay, defense behind him. Should rack up the strikeouts, have a low three ERA, and a chance to become one of the best pitchers in baseball this season. I, I'm drafting Joe Musgrove whenever I can get him. Yeah, you've been drafting Joe Musgrove a lot. I haven't, I haven't really been for some reason. Your innings, like how many, how many logs? Like I don't think Joe Musgrove as like a, a workhorse, but the numbers don't lie. Like he's obviously been a workhorse. We he was begging, last year. We were begging for him to get out of Pittsburgh, and he finally did. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Yeah, so it's good to see that he is taking control there. What round is he going? He's going around. I mean, 77th pick. Okay. I can't do the math. That okay. Quick. It's 7th, 6th round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all we got. We'll do the research for you guys. Mm-hmm. Like Musgrove and Weber, guys, that being on the West Coast that we don't mm-hmm. see too often. So you just dive into some of these stats. It's like, hey, there's some obvious obvious ways that you can take an advantage. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Subscribe. Join the cord. We will see you next time.